Hi, my name's John and I am a human doing. And what am I doing today? I'm building a storage cabinet for our main closet in our home. And why am I doing it? Uh, that's because my wife, lovely wife, she is, uh, she's short. She's vertically challenged. Short is probably not PC. She is vertically challenged. So for the vertically challenged in my family, I wanted to make something that was a little bit easier to access because they have trouble sometimes, my wife, she has trouble reaching this shelf and certainly the one above it. So this is gonna give everyone uh, you know, quick access to things that they use every day and you know, they don't have to use a stepping stool. So please like and subscribe, ask any questions you have below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And here's how we make it, thanks. Any project like this where you have a lot of sheet goods, the first step you're gonna do is to break down those sheet goods into more manageable sizes. So I'm cutting this walnut uh, particle core into uh, down to length, which is 68 inches, and I'm cutting it to width with the table saw. The reason I didn't use it to, the table saw to cut the length of the material is because my room isn't quite wide enough to cut an eight foot sheet. So I have to use the track saw for that. But the table saw is certainly the fastest and most convenient way to cut things. But thankfully, I do have that track saw because it does come in handy when, uh, when you're tearing down big sheets like this. And in this particular case, I'm cutting these uh, sheets at 15 and a half inches wide. All three of them are same. And what I'm cutting here are two sides and one back, but they happen to be the same dimensions. The shelving won't be symmetrical, meaning the shelves aren't evenly spaced all the way down. So I want to make sure I mark the top and I'm just doing that where I'm, I'm just putting a pencil mark T for top and that allows me to to know where to put the dados. As you can see here, I just did a sample. I set up a dado stack for half inch wide and I'm just checking it. I just grab a piece of scrap material to check it and I'm using the table saw to cut those dados. Now one convenient part about this particular project is the back and the sides are all getting, like I mentioned earlier, they were all the same dimensions. They're also getting all identical dados. So uh, up until a certain point, all three pieces of this walnut uh, particle core, they're gonna be identical. So I'll make the same cut three times. So one setup, three cuts, makes the pieces identical, which certainly makes uh, a project like this go really, really quickly, thankfully, because uh, I only had a day to do it. So <laughs> that was nice. But I should also comment that you don't have to do dados. Uh, you don't have to have a table saw for this particular project. You could use your local big box store. They can tear down the sheets for you as long as you give them the dimensions that you're looking for. And you can just do butt joints. You can screw it together, nail it together. If you have a Craig jig, you could do that. So that's certainly not mandatory. So this is where the panels become unique, I guess. So the left and right side are both having a groove put in them. It's on the back side. So one groove and either of them, again, but it's opposites or they're mirror images. And you can see I'm using the same dado stack as a half inch dado stack. The only difference is I've added a sacrificial fence because I don't want it to rub up against the metal fence. That would obviously be dangerous. And one thing I, I still have to do is the groove on the top of these panels. I couldn't do it on the table saw on that, uh, on that sacrificial fence sta dado stack that I had set up because my table saw or my room isn't quite wide enough, like I mentioned earlier for when I was breaking down the material. So I'm using a small, uh, a small router and just a, a half inch spiral bit. And that's to do grooves that does an exceptional job. You could do all your grooves this way, but because I have the table saw, that was the easiest, fastest way to do it. But this is certainly an option if, if you have a router. And here's all three panels finished, laid out and ready for assembly. Yeehaw. <laughs> so you can see assembly here. I didn't show the cutting of the, the, the shelves. That's just redundant from what I've, you know, from what you've seen previously, because it's really just cut on the table saw. But you'll see here when I'm putting it together, because I use the, the dados, I put the grooves in there, projects like this go together like, uh, like Lego blocks. It's really, really straightforward, really simple, and you're going to get a really square finish. You don't actually see me checking square very often, but trust me, I'm, I'm checking all the time. And I'm actually using a small hand square here just to mark lines so that I know where to put my nails. Uh, if, if you're in woodworking or, or if you're not, I'm sure you can imagine putting a nail through a finished project or if your nail pokes out through, it sucks. So you want to mark your, your, your nail lines and I'm just marking it right up against the center of that, uh, the groove for each one. So the nail's dead center into each of those shelves. So with the side, one side, I guess it'd be the left side and the back along with all the shelves assembled and, and nailed together, it's time to do the 
the right side. So I want to note with the glue, I'm trying to use enough glue, but not so much that I get squeeze out. Any squeeze out has to be cleaned up and then the area has to be re-sanded. Anything that has squeeze out and you don't notice, then you've really got to sand and clean up that glue because when the finish is applied, any of the spots with glue stick out like a sore thumb. So you want to make sure you don't have any glue. And the best way to do that is to try not to use too much glue. There are times you want squeeze out, but this is not one of them. So just use just enough glue to get the job done and you'll be a, a much happy camper, a camper in the end. The assembly for all the sides, like I mentioned, is it's just brad nails. You can see me putting them in. And it's just inch and a quarter brad nails. That's more than long enough for half inch material. One inch would be fine, but I happen to have an uh, inch and a quarter in, in the gun and I'm like, yeah, that's good enough for me right now. And I'm just the, if there's any tricky areas for nailing, it was right there, you saw the back. But thankfully with all the marking that I did, nothing poked through, so no extra work. And this is what I ended up with. So this is the finished cabinet. Or well, not the finished cabinet, the finished interior portion of the cabinet, but you'll see, you're like, hey, there's a dado there, or that, that groove. And what are you gonna to do to cover it? Well, I am using solid walnut, they're actually scraps. This is actually material that I was gonna be putting in uh, for firewood. But I found a new home for it. I found something a little bit better than firewood. So I just cut pieces to length and rounded the edges over, just obviously because it's a shelf and you don't wanna have any sharp edges inside the shelf. And you'll see, once I put it in, it looks, it, it, Obviously, it's, it's all walnut, so it matches perfectly. And it's going to cover up that spot where the, the groove was, uh, where it's kind of not covered. So you'll see here, all those caps are put on. So the walnut caps. And you won't see those, uh, those spaces where the dados are, are not covered. My finish of choice, uh, for at least the interior, the walnut portion of this, is the tried and true... A Danish finishing oil, which is really just a linseed oil with a varnish mixed in. So it's a little bit more durable than just straight linseed oil. It's super duper easy to apply. I just said super duper. I do apologize. <laughs> um, it's easy to apply. I put it on with just the standard rag and then I come over after it's, it's settled for a while and I bring a dry rag and I just wipe it all down. And this is the finish you end up with. It is a Obviously, obviously very easy finish to apply, but it's also great because you can reapply it in the future uh, much easier than you could something like a lacquer. Now with that walnut interior basically finished, I can work on the exterior of the cabinet. So this is kind of a, a cabinet wrapped in another cabinet. I'm using half inch walnut on the inside, 5 8 MDF capped, or like a 5 8 MDF veneer almost on the outside. A 5 8 is a little extreme, but I couldn't find MDF anywhere. I mean, everybody is sold out of everything and nobody seems to be getting anything anytime soon. So there was five eights available and I said, what the hell, let's go five eights. I'm, I'm good with that. So it doesn't really make a difference how thick it is. You could use one inch, it just makes your cabinet heavier. Uh, there's no advantage or disadvantage other than the weight and the possible um, extra outlay of cash. So I am gluing both sides. That's the MDF side and the panel. And in this case, I, I let it dry. I put a couple nails in it just to make sure it doesn't move. And I just set the cabinet up on its head for an hour. And then I could do both sides. And I'm doing one panel at a time. I'm letting them dry for about an hour. So you can see here again, I put glue on the MDF panel. I put glue on the, on the cabinet interior. And I just plop it down. Put it in fast forward because I don't usually move this fast uh, and it's not all that fast so it doesn't say much for me but I put it on and again I'm using a few these aren't brad nails these are finishing nails so they're like little almost like little needles so they're very easy to fill so I don't want to use anything crazy and I am using clamps one thing I want to note about these clamps and I see you know, anytime I have have anybody do clamps, you don't, you know, it's not festivus. You don't have to, you know, there's no show of strength required. Just use enough power to get your board down. And when you get a little bit of squeeze out, you're good to go. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to show me how strong you are. So once those panels are dry, this is what I'm doing here. I am putting trim on the front and it's just a one inch MDF trim. And it's just sort of old or, or off cuts of MDF and I'm putting it all the way around. I'm not doing 45s on the corners. They're just straight butt joints because it's going to be painted white and there's no, no reason to get real fancy. And you might be saying, oh, well, that doesn't quite fit. But this is a piece of trim 
that I'm putting on here, and that's going to be covering that sort of lip that I left. And I left the lip there because I wanted something to stop that, uh, that piece of trim that I'll be making. But unfortunately, I didn't have any. I thought I had some pre-made, but I don't, so I had to break out a little bit of... Uh, this is maple. It's actually hard maple, if you want to get all fancy. So this is just a piece of hard maple. I've already cut it cut to rough length, so I think I cut it to something like 75 inches, so it's more length than I need. But when you're breaking stuff out, you want to have a little more than you need. So I'm just breaking it out. So I'm just doing one on the joiner, one flat face and one flat edge. And then I run it through my thickness planer here. Thankfully, I've got all that stuff for breaking out. But you're running that through here. And really, all I'm trying to do is get this down to three quarter inches thick. So that's the same thickness MDF. I don't want it to protrude further than the MDF trim that I put on a little bit earlier. And once I get that down to three quarter inch, I then rip this uh, hard maple down to narrower strips. I only need three. Uh, I, I should have made more just so I don't have to make it again in the future. But I only need three strips for this project. I don't plan on screwing up, so I'm only going to make enough to do the job. So let's cross our fingers that I don't mess it up. But I'm going to cut it again. I'm just cutting narrow strips. They're about uh, 3 8 inch thick. And then I put all three of those pieces through my planer at the same time just to get me down to the finished thickness that I need for the trim pieces that I'm creating. The final step to make the trim is to use this triple bead a bit that I use. I actually use it a fair bit for, for projects like this. So I only use one of the three beads. In this case, I'm using the top bead, but I, sometimes I use the middle one, sometimes the bottom one, you know, whatever I feel like on the day. So I'm using that bead, and I'm just using a piece that I already had, sort of a scrap piece left over that I had previously as sort of a guide. And I don't have a proper fence set up on my router table, so I just kind of jerry-rigged one, and it's going to do a good enough job. And obviously, you can see I don't have dust collection, but that'll be a project for the future. I don't know when, but it's going to come, because dust sucks, and I have all kinds of it. So you can see the project, or not the project, but the trim when it's done. So it's really just a rounded edge with sort of a, like a shadow line all the way around. And I find this is, this is actually this, the same type of trim I used when I made my kitchen and all the other cabinets in my house. So it's going to match everything else that's in our home. So... Uh, that's why I used it here because that's just kind of what I've done everywhere else. I'm just going to clear up here. I'm just clearing up some of the uh, the excess glue that I have on this uh, project. When you're doing MDF, squeeze out is a good thing. When I was doing the the walnut earlier, I don't want squeeze out. But when you're doing MDF panels like this, squeeze out is good. But I also fill. So once I did that sanding, I filled in every joint, whether I thought it was bad or not. So I fill everywhere. Now I'm just using a standard spackle uh, wood filler. So this stuff sands super duper easy. So there's it, it takes almost nothing to take it off. But I just put that on there. Whether there was a gap or not, or whether there was a, a void or not, I put filler everywhere. And you'll notice there, those little feet, I just pointed at it. That's just there for finishing so, so the cabinet's not sitting right on the ground. Now here you can see I am using my favorite router bit. I think it's got to be my favorite. It's got a lot of miles on it. This is an eighth inch roundover bit, and I use it on almost everything. I mean, I think I use it on all my cabinets in my home and probably a lot of other homes as well. So I use an eighth inch roundover bit because it's the closest bit I have to a, a 90 degree, you know, sharp edge. You can't really do sharp edges, especially with MDF, because it's just not going to let the material be... It, it, well, it won't be durable enough. The project won't be. And uh, sharp edges are also not very good for solid finishes, because finish shrinks as it dries. And if you have a sharp edge when it shrinks, it's going to cause a cracks, which you don't want. With everything routed over, it's time for finishing. But before I do the finishing, I wanted to show you the cart that I put underneath my cabinet. Uh, when you have a heavier cabinets. This isn't an ultra heavy cabinet, but it's heavy enough that I don't want to move it around all the time by myself. So I have a little cart with wheels on it and I just put a piece of plywood on top of that and it rolls around and it lets me spin my projects as needed. And like other projects that I've done, I think if you've watched any of my previous YouTube videos, I'm using lacquer based finishes. So right now I'm applying the first coat of primer. There's going to be two coats of primer on this and then two top coats. But the first primer coat is, well, I, I think it's, it's, it's obviously it's critical, but it's also the nastiest finish. I mean, uh, it it it's, has the most rough sort of feel when you're done. So if you want a good finish, 
sanding is your best friend. The difference between a good finish and a mediocre finish is often the, your, you know, your ability or your willingness to sand. So the first coat is always going to be nasty. It almost feels like sandpaper when you're done. You can see it here, or at least I'm trying to have you see it here. So there you go as it focuses. You can see it's kind of really rough and nasty and, you know, you definitely don't want your finish to be like that. But the nice thing about these lacquer-based primers is they sand like a dream. So you can see I'm, I'm using 220 grit sandpaper and it's just, it's like butter as far as sanding goes. It's awesome to sand. So make sure you're using a respirator. Um, and the second coat, you'll find the second coat is much, much nicer. This is again, your, obviously this is the second coat that I'm putting on the second primer coat. And the difference between the first and second coat is night and day. This is a fairly smooth finish. Not perfect, you still wanna sand in between, but it's, it's a much nicer finish. And this is the first coat of uh, the 20 degree sheen uh, CC40 is the color so cloud cover 40 is the finish and it's I mentioned it's a 20 degree sheen so this is lacquer based product again this doesn't dry as fast as the primer I give this about an hour in between coats and you but you don't have to sand so I got two coats of that off and now it's like magic time pull off the paper just the the masking paper and there's the cabinet ain't she a beauty <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you can see, yeah, it's, uh, you know, the masking did its job. Everything's nice and clean on the inside. And because I pre-finished it, I don't have to worry about getting the out outside all oily and greasy from that uh, linseed oil. And the only step I have left is to drill holes in the bottom and put in feet. So I just have a just standard sort of a plastic insert with a screw on a felt a foot. And that's perfect for uh, hardwood floors like we have in our home. And there it is in its home. It will soon be full of women's garbage. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Love you, hon. So there you have it. That is how I built my closet cabinet. I know my family's going to get lots of use out of it, and I'll definitely be able to reach now seeing as it's uh, down to the floor. So even the shortest of people will be able to use this thing, which is good. So again, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. I know my methods of building things can sometimes be a little bit different, but uh, different strokes for different folks. Please like and subscribe. Have any questions, put them down below. I'll get to them as soon as I can, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.